this ain't Friday. You know, I kept my bike, all spokes and all. You know what I'm saying? You ain't just going to take my bike. And that's my chain. My mama gave me that chain. But that's a story for another day, all right? You know, my mama gave me that chain. <laughs> but with that, we got a man that's talking with Uncle Tim and Big Keisha, a.k.a. doing it and doing it and doing it right, a.k.a. you already know, a.k.a. Mr. I, you know, I do I do it right, you know. And oh, that's Uncle Tim, aka Tim 2.0, aka uh, Tim 2.0 Review. Make sure y'all follow that man. He got a lot of good stuff to say over there. Hey, he was doing them chips, man. He wasn't giving good reviews, so hey, hey, look out on them chips. I don't know if he's doing some more soon. Uh, but with that, we got something that came up that we wanted to talk about. So this topic came up. The old adage, the old saying, the old get you through a marriage saying, the old uh, you say this, it gets you right. The saying is, happy wife, happy life. Now, with so many people getting divorced, obviously people ain't making their wives happy, right? Or these wives ain't happy. But in that same saying, uh, one that came across my Facebook page is they said you should upgrade it to happy, happy spouse, happy house. And I think for me, that's a better assessment. But let's get Uncle Tim's viewpoint on it. I'm going to say this. You know, anytime that you make one person the epicenter of a relationship, a marriage, it's bound to not work. Because only one damn person is happy. You making one person happy throughout this thing. What about the other person? What about the husband? You said happy wife, happy life. But what about the husband? What about him? Do a sad chick supposed to make him happy? Yeah, he can have a concubine. You know, everybody's grandfather did. <laughs> uh, or, you know... <laughs> Don't get mad. Okay. You know you got brothers and sisters look just like you around the corner. Or like they used to say back in the day, boy, that's that's your uncle. You be like, mama, who's that man coming out of your room? That's your uncle. You know, you used to hear stories like that all the time. Like, that's your uncle. Mama, I thought you Daddy, were the only that child. Baby? That's your auntie. <laughs> mama, I thought you was the only child. <laughs> and why uncle in the room with you so long? Why both of y'all sweat? You was talking. <laughs> I ain't never been talking and sweating, mama. That's when you got popped in the head. Just stop asking questions. But, you know, I believe if, you know, one person is happy, it's off kilter. It's not equally yoked. The yin and the yang is not working. One person cannot be happy. Both of you have to be happy. You signed on a legal contract to be happy for the rest of your damn life. Or, you know, to go through ups and downs. You know, life is, you know, 50-50 all the damn time. But I believe happy spouse, happy house. I believe, damn, that's real for these times. Well, I think a better, I, for me, I think the happy wife, happy life comes from a time long ago where the wife held down the house and, you know, she washed the dishes, cleaned the house, raised the kids. Made sure, you know, you know, made sure how the, how the money was spent to make sure that everything got paid. And I think a lot of people are still trying to live in that time. The thing is, I think what people forget about that time is two things. One, a lot of women one, were not afforded the opportunity to do more in life with as far as occupations. For the most part, they were relegated to being nurses, uh, maids, um, at, at best in some situations, school teachers. And that's what they thought was the purpose of a woman. And then beyond that, they were just to bear children, which is which is not right on many levels. But I think that saying comes from a time like that. And I think it was a saying to try to say respect the woman in your house. You should respect the woman in your house regardless. You should respect women regardless. But I think it was trying to say, look at all the things that she's doing. Make sure you have that respect. Uh, but here's the other thing. 
you you people say well some things last but you can't use that old adage and try to fast forward to the modern time and what i mean by that is i know we just joked about it a few minutes ago but let's be honest i don't know anybody's granddaddy hell there's barely some daddies out there who weren't who didn't have a family on the side a woman on the side you know how many times you hear hey man they look just like me where they at they're around the corner Man, your daddy ain't been home in a week. Your dad come home, stay with your family for one week, and stay with that family for one week. He was alternating families, but y'all act like that was just normal. Well, you know, a man was a man then. Shut up. <laughs> you well, ain't... women knew. But it's then, not like they didn't know. But now everyone's like, you know, my grandmother would have never. Your grandma would never, but you got one, your grandfather got one kid by you and 18 by six other women stop playing people people like to forget some forget a lot of things and my thing is people don't like to update stuff they like to say well this is the way it should be it's just like you wouldn't you wouldn't dare be caught using a phone from the 50s right now could you imagine having a rotary phone right now my great grandmother your grandmother still had a rotary phone i still remember it i used to mess up trying to call <laughs> Oh, God dang it. That was supposed to be a three, not a two. You wouldn't dare be called using that phone right now. Because what? You got a cell phone. You updated it. And I think a big part of this is a lot of guys, and I know how women going to be with this next statement. A lot of guys aren't cheating like y'all make, like make them out to be. There are guys that cheat. Don't get me wrong. There's some bum dudes out here. But a lot of guys aren't cheating like that. They want to be respected within their relationship. They want to be partners within their relationship. It's not a dictatorship that what the woman says is law and you just want me to, yes, ma'am. Yep, yep. You want me to pay the bills? Yes, yes, she does. Oh, you want me to bring all the money home to you? Okay, I bring all the money home to you. I'm you want me to be faithful to you? To I'll just be faithful to you. You going to, hey, you going to wash the dishes? Oh, that's all you want to do is wash dishes? All right, that's all you got to do, even though we got to dish or wash them. Yeah, we got a dishwasher. Yes, we does. So you just put them in the dishwasher, and that's the, everything you got to do, right? All right. Yes, I'm so. Come on, man. Stop playing. <laughs> Stop playing. If and you, you will be sleeping on the couch tonight. <laughs> if you living like that, again, uh, I feel that a lot of women are living with a 1950s mentality in 2020, and that's why things aren't connecting. If you're not bringing anything to the relationship, and again, it's not always financial. I've said that in many videos. You have to bring your whole self, your whole ass to a relationship. You can't be sitting there looking for somebody to save your whole ass. You got to bring all of you to a relationship. And if you don't, your whole ass will be out on the street, living at home with your daddy in the basement, living at home with your mama in the attic. Because you won't be with somebody because nobody wants to be with somebody who ain't holding up their weight. I'm going to say this to you, brother, and I'm going to say this. And I'm going to say this in a way that is said properly. I think a lot of people with that old adage of a relationship should be 50-50. No, it shouldn't. No, it's not. You both should be giving 100 damn percent. Why the hell are you giving 50%? You don't give your job 50%. You give your job 100 damn percent. You should give relationship or marriage 100%. Mm -hmm. People ask why they stuff don't work. It doesn't work because you're not giving your all to it. Hell, how do you expect somebody to take you serious if you're not being serious? Mm, that's true. Shit, real talk. You know, you knew we would get to this point. You just knew we would get to this point. Now we're about to get to this point. I am so tired of these ungrateful ass people that make it seem like it's somebody else's fault. It's nobody else's fault. What you going to do is your own fault. Ooh, it's you heard that race car in the back. That man speeding to that point. Go ahead. Hold yourself accountable for Ooh, what they oh, do. No, no, no. You can't say the A word. You cannot say the A word on here. Accountability. You know what? I used to think that when I used to sit back and be in a relationship, I said, man, communication got to be the best thing in the world. No, comprehension is. If I don't know what the hell you talking about, you just babbling. You just blurring out words. Words that don't mean anything don't matter. Mm 
But if you understand the language that they are being spoken in, guess what? You can make a change in that situation. Mm -hmm. Man, please. Nobody ain't really willing to give 100%. People willing to give at least 50 damn percent or 30% and complain all the way through. And Man. you know what? I'll go even further. I, I agree with you on the 100%. Um, in a relationship, you need to give that. But I, I'll, I'll go even farther. Chris Rock said it, and I, I think it was a great statement. You got to know when to play the goddamn tambourine in your relationship. And that's what I think a lot of people don't do. Everybody want to be Michael Jackson in their goddamn relationship. It, it wasn't two Michael Jacksons in the Jackson 5. It was one Michael. Okay. Then you had Tito over there playing the bass. Or was he playing? No, Tito was playing the guitar. Jermaine was playing the bass. All right? You got to know your part. You got to know when to play that goddamn tambourine. And here's a perfect example of what I'm saying. Not every man is good with money. I know every goddamn I know how to do Some of you are some bum dudes. Y'all spend. Y'all got gambling problems. Y'all just ain't good with it. But if your lady is good with money, well, now a man is supposed to control the money. What kind of idiotic statement does that sound if my lady is better at managing funds but no i need to manage it because i'm the man and now we in debt but no let me get us deeper in debt because i'm the man you are you are, you a new fool that's all y'all i'm gonna say it like this with that with what you just said i'm gonna say you gotta be careful man you get somebody complete control of your finances it's, it's not it's complete control, control. But you got to know who's better at certain things. You but might you be a better cook. Trust the person. Too. Right. You might be a better cook. So, hey, you might say, hey, I'll cook these particular meals. You cook these easier meals. Again, because I know this takes a little bit more work. Yes, you might be better at managing the money. But guess what? Hey, I still make money. And there's some things that, you know, hey, I'm going to have my input. And we're still going to do things this way and that way. You got to know when you got to take a step back. Take your ego and step back. A lot of men always want women to check themselves, but a lot of guys won't check themselves. Sometimes you got to check your damn self when you ain't good at something and admit that you ain't good at something. Hell, my wife is a better writer than me. Hell, she does it professionally. What? How would it sound if I'm like, no, nah, but see, I need to write this because a man should be writing everything for his family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Am I going to look at it and be like, yeah, you know, you might want to do that, that, that have my input. But I understand she's better at it than me. I can do, I'm a better cook than my wife. She, she don't want to admit it, but she knows it. <laughs> Again, but that, she knows when to play the tambourine. I know when to play the damn tambourine. And Chris Rock said it best. And you just don't play that tambourine. You play that tambourine with your ass. You hear me? You play it like you ain't never played another instrument before in your life. But you know what, and, and this would be before you wrap it up, but I'm going to say this. A lot of times, people don't want to play the second fiddle. You know, in a relationship, there will always be a superstar at any given time. It's not both of you at all times. One time it's going to be one person, the other time it's going to be another person. Never at the same time you both will shine at the same time. One will shine, then the other one will shine. Not at the same time. It do not work like that. Not on God's earth. You both do not shine at the same time. You may get some shine off this other person, yeah. And you still mm -hmm. able to shine, but you not going to be shining as bright as this person at the same time. You know, I believe that when all of this is said and done, you know, you either put up or shut up. You know, you got to know when to fold your cards. You got to know when to step back and look at the situation and say, well... I'm not good at that. I'm not good at that. I know to defer to my wife at certain things because if I know it gets a better response with her, I have her speak. You know, not have her speak. She speaks. You know, but, you know, when I say have her speak, you know, that's me misspeaking out here. So let me make sure to throw that out there, you know. You can't control no damn woman. We all know that, you know. I was sliding out the frame as you try to apologize to your wife on camera. <laughs> oh. Man, please. My wife heard that and probably know I misspoke. Man, please.
You don't disrespect a woman, man. You understand that. You misspeak and you apologize. You own it and let it go after that. But what I said here is I agree with you on this biggest situation that happy spouse, happy life. I mean, happy spouse, happy house. That's everybody. You know, two happy people together to make everybody else in the happy in the house happy, you know, as far as the kids and stuff like that. But if mom only happy, everybody looking at mama just be happy. They like, damn, yo, what is that like? <laughs> and you know, I'm gonna go back in time one more time. A lot of people I've heard, a lot of people, especially women, say, "Well, my, you know, my grandfather was the strongest guy I ever met. He really never said nothing, and grandma did this, and grandma did that." Y'all, y'all gotta really take, take a real good look. Your grandfather wasn't happy. There are some grandfathers who weren't happy. They were taught to shut up and provide. They, but they weren't happy. They stayed with your grandmothers because that's what they were reared or raised to do. And that's it. They weren't happy. Again, it's a reason a lot of them di- guys were dying at 52. And your grandma <laughs> lived to 98. You know, y- y'all gotta realize your grandfathers were not happy. And, you know, you say now, well, I don't get a chance to express myself. Imagine being a man in the 30s and 40s and your wife just saying everything, anything. And you just sitting there, yes, baby. Baby, wa- y'all, she right. Happy wife, happy life. Mm-hmm. Yup, she right. And you want to knock a brain out of here. You ain't expressed nothing. You holding it all in. You done held it in for years. And you died because you held it all in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and nobody likes to admit that. They like to, well, they was together for 50 years. But how many of those years were happy? How many of those years were good? Your grandma, she was, they were all happy because he spent his whole time saying, happy wife, happy life. But how many times did she say, happy happy husband, happy what? There's not even nothing that rhymes with husband. You see what I'm saying? You can't think of nothing that even rhymes with husband that would work. <laughs> it must be as a no. See? Because the husband was an afterthought. His job was to bring money home and, and that provide. was his way of providing. That was it. He didn't get a chance to bring his whole self. Your grandfather had hopes and dreams and guess what? He never got to achieve them. You know why? Because of your grandmother. That's why I said it. She was the reason your dad wasn't your granddad wasn't a famous jazz player. Yeah, his granddad, he thought he was good. <laughs> I know I went left with it just because I wanted to. But no, seriously, y'all, y'all gotta understand that men have feelings too. I know they got that commercial where um Deion Cole is talking about men have skin too and like things that like to smell good. But men have feelings too. And y'all, you gotta admit that a lot of your fathers and grandfathers and great grandfathers. They didn't get a chance to express themselves. They had a lot of hypertension. They had a lot of pressure on them on top of everything going on outside the house. The one thing that should be present is that no matter man or woman, you should come home to a peaceful house. You shouldn't come home and have just as much drama in your house as you got in the streets. And if you don't, that ain't a house you should come home to. Oh, they didn't have options back then. They had options. This is why they had, you know, kids that looked alike around the corner. You know, they went to certain houses, man, because they couldn't take it no more. Papa was a rolling stone because he can only deal with your grandmother. He can only deal with your mama for seven days, and then he needed seven days off. (laughs) I said it. So what? Two tears in a bucket. And with that, let's ride out.